Hey guys, Ronan here. Hope you are having a great start to your weekend wherever you may be in the wide, wide world. And welcome back to the Retrocade in our second Sports Saturday feature where we are going to take on the Sega Genesis 1994 game NHL Hockey. I know I've been playing a lot of games from 1994 lately because since we're doing the Final Fantasy VI walkthrough, that's from 1994. I played King of Fighters 1, which also happened to be from 1994 last weekend for our first Sucker Punch Sunday. But I guess that stands to reason that in the early to mid-90s, there were a lot of great games that were coming out around this time across the entire spectrum. I mean, you had great role-playing games, great fighting games, great sports games. And as you saw from the beginning of this, there was a time that EA, Electronic Arts, EA Sports, made really, really good sports games. I know it seems antithetical now with the fiascos that have been John Madden football and FIFA and everything that they've done in the recent generations, but back in the day when it was the 16-bit consoles like the Super Nintendo Entertainment System and more importantly the Sega Genesis. The Sega Genesis really was the one to go to for these sorts of games. EA ruled the roost. So what we're going to do today, over the course of the next half hour, is we are going to go ahead and play one game of NHL Hockey 94. We're not going to do it for too long. And see if this game is still as good as I remember it to be. Now, it was a game that I used to play with my older sibling who, again, he helped get me into video games, but he was such a massive sports nut that out of self-defense, I ended up having to play sports games with him all the time. And as I grew up in the Northeast and in uh, Massachusetts and New England, I grew up naturally being a Boston Bruins fan. So we're going to go ahead and have a showdown between the Boston Bruins playing at home in the old Boston Garden. And actually, let me make sure I have this right here. Against... The Hartford Whalers. And if you don't know who the Hartford Whalers are and you're a hockey fan, it's because the Hartford Whalers haven't been around now for almost 25 years. They are now known as the Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah, I'm going to turn the penalties on, turn the line changes on. And we're only going to go 10 minutes a period. There are three periods in hockey if you're not familiar with the game. So this should take, I'd say, between 15 and 20 minutes because it tends to go pretty quick. But what I always liked about the EA games back in the 16-bit generation was they gave you presentations like an actual sports broadcast. So you would get all this pre-game stuff. They give you an idea of who's doing what. You get a breakdown of the players. You'd see how they're ranked. And then you just go and play. So, as always, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for the latest notifications, and, of course, leave a like. Helps me figure out how we're going to be able to keep creating content going forward. And if there are other games you'd like to see us play across the Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo, Sega Master System, obviously Sega Genesis, Neo Geo, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 eras, leave them down in the comments below. I can't promise I'll get to all of them right away, but we'll see what we can do. And also check out Sucker Punch Sunday tomorrow, where we will play a classic fighting game out of the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th generation. And then, of course, tune in Monday, Wednesday, Friday as we're continuing on going through Final Fantasy VI for the Super NES. As the Zamboni clears the ice off, we'll just go ahead and get this game underway. Now, the thing about the Hartford Whalers was they weren't a great game, a great team back in the day. And my Bruins are in white. And the Whalers are obviously in blue. Now, in this game, it's being the Sega Genesis, you had... It wasn't the most complicated game to learn how to play. As they go across in front of the net. And we're able to pick it off. And Oates come up with the shot, and it's saved by Burke. 
But one of the things that people loved about this game was you just were able to do kind of rock'em, sock'em hockey. Which, if you're familiar with hockey at all, is kind of the name of the game. I mean, there is actual skill involved. With a one-timer from Sweeney, no good. But this was easily one of the most popular hockey games ever made in the last 30 years. I freely admit I have not played a recent game. So I don't know how well they've aged. As we got a breakaway. Oh, and we got a penalty. Oh, and it's going to be a penalty shot for hooking. So it'll be Jeff Sanderson against Andy Moog, my goalie. This will be interesting. We'll see how this works. Comes around. And no, he doesn't get it to go. It's been a long time since I've seen a penalty shot issued in this game. Oh crap, we got another breakaway. Another penalty coming up. So let's see. And another penalty shot for roughing. So two back-to-back -back penalty shots on breakaway opportunities. Let's see what Shaw can do here against Moog. The shot is saved. And we got an offside. So in offsides is the person with the puck has to be the first one across this blue line. If anybody else goes before him when the puck crosses the net, that's an offside. And you don't want to have that. Try to shot from the corner. No good as Burke held on to it. And we're going to get a face-off near the Hartford goal with 5.36 to go in the first. That's it. Rip and save by Burke. Now we gotta get break it up here. Heading down the ice. Goes cross. Shot! No good. Save! Trying to put it back in. No good. So Burke standing on his head early. And he put it in for the score. Jansen's with the assist from Yick and Lodesur. And Hartford is on the board. 1-0 with 4.14 to go in the first. Now, here's the problem with this game. When... If the opposition scores first, they tend to play clamp-down defense. And makes it really hard to be able to come back in and play. Or get back into the game at all. As that's an offside. Having not played this game in a long time, it reminds me... And I know a lot of people, younger kids, and I'm not saying this is a get-off-my-lawn sort of thing... But it's just one of those that most kids aren't going to know this. But when I was little, there was a... we If we wanted to play hockey, there was a, a tabletop version of it we could play where all the players were on sliding rods and you could spin them around and they were you couldn't really move them that far. But it was kind of like foosball for hockey. And it was, whoop, as we had a slight lag there, pardon me. Oh, we got a penalty coming up against Hartford, so we're going to get a power play here. And we'll see what it is. Charging on Jeff Sanderson. So two minutes in the box, we have a power play. So a power play is, it's five on four until either we score... Or time runs out. But yeah, when I was younger, if we wanted to play something like hockey before we really had ready access to video games, we would have to play that version of it. It's kind of like how kids when I was younger, if they wanted to play football before we had stuff like Madden, we had what was an electronic video or electronic football set which was a big metal plate that you turned on and plugged it in and everybody kind of rumbled around. So we've got seven seconds left in the period. 
And we'll have about 30 seconds left on the power play in the second period. So we'll see here. One of the other things I like about this game is that they give you intermission highlights of certain games. So if you look down below here, you'll see they're flashing different scores. But again, treating it like an actual TV broadcast, they threw this in as additional content. They didn't have to do that. This gives you an idea of how back in the day, EA was actually really interested in giving you the full experience. But it doesn't look like we get any highlights in this one. So we still have the power play for 30 seconds as we get the second period underway. And we already start with an offside. Now, if you look where the they're showing in the face-off window, the, that PP1 and PK2, that gives you the, uh, the line for each team. So, like, right now... And we've got another penalty coming up, just as the previous one expired. Two minutes for roughing on Zachary Zapol uh, Zapolsky. So it's another two-minute power play for the Bruins. Let's see if we can capitalize here. Instead, it comes right down the ice. Oh, look at this! Oh, can't get it to go! Burke still sitting there on his head. Can not get anything by him at all. Try the backhander, no good. That one doesn't go. And he gets run over trying to score. And Bork right there. 77 Ray Bork is one of the greatest defensemen of all time. But he had to go all the way to Colorado to finally win a Stanley Cup in his last year. So we couldn't capitalize on that one. And Oates ties it up with a one-timer on the assist come from Kavarlov and Neely. So we're all square at 1-1. And just like that, that's how fast the game can turn around. It takes a while to figure out a way to score. But if you can do it... Whoops, as I passed it the wrong way. And we gave it away. Now we got a 2-1-1. On Look out! Moog with another save. We got an offside. So we're about halfway home here in the second period. And we're all square at 1-1. One, one. Oh, I thought I had a chance to put it in the net there. Bring it up. That shot was high. Saved by Burke. Yeah, back in the day when I was a kid, seeing the Boston Bruins play against the Hartford Whalers was always fun because Boston and Hartford are about 90 minutes away from each other. Now, an icing call is when the puck goes down to the far end of the ice before anybody else touches it. Trying for the shot. Saved again by Burke. Run over! But that's going to be an offside. So yeah, the controls in this game are pretty straightforward. Your B button is pass. Your A button is to do what's called a poke check, where you can basically try and steal a puck away from a guy. And your C is the heavy check and your shoot button. And I think I'm just going too far in on these shots over here. The problem with trying to shoot a puck in this game... is that 
you have to be if you want to try and figure out where you want to put the puck it's all dependent on where you are in the d-pad and since in this game you're either going up or down you've got to be able to know when to move the puck or move the control pad up so you can try and go above the goalies pads or go down and go by them as we're under a minute to go here in the second period Ooh, that was risky. I don't want to clear the net. And I'm avoiding an offside. And that one-timer is no good. A one-timer is when you do a pass like that. As that ends the period. A one-timer is when you give a pass over. And as soon as it gets to the other player, they fire it. Oh, man. 8-2 New York over Quebec. That's rough. 8-2 in a hockey game is not something you really see that often. But yeah, the Hartford Whalers in 97 were such a small market team that the ownership decided they needed to move. See, now we're going to get a highlight from this game between Dallas and Philadelphia. And this is the computer doing it all on its own. As Rachie gets the tying goal, and now they'll go to overtime and we'll see... It looks like they're going to try this one again. Rachie trying to get the shot off. Let's it go sideways and puts it in. Lindros got the goal, actually, on the assist from Rachie. So Philadelphia wins 6-5. So we go to the third period here. And if we are tied at the end of this, there is overtime in it. And unlike nowadays where you have a shootout, I think it is possible... That this game could end in a tie. I hope it doesn't. I would like to see us win. Oh, and I tried to get the shot off and I got bumped. That's going to be an offside. The one problem I have with this game is that offsides happens way too frequently. And it tends to slow the game down. Fortunately, as we're only playing 10-minute periods, it's not too bad. I try to go the sideways on him. And Neely gets run over. Cam Neely was a good player for the Bruins, but he got hurt so much in his career that it was a shame that he never really got to really see his potential realized. And then if you pass it ahead and it goes over the blue line, by the time another player gets there, that's an offside as well. And this will clear down and Burke will collect it. Now there is no fighting that I'm aware of in this game. That's another aspect of it. I know older games, like Blades of Steel for the Nintendo, you had that feature. In fact, they highlighted it to an extent. Try the backhander, no. Yeah, got tripped, but that caused the offsides. But I don't recall there being fighting in this game. And if there is, I think... I know there are other EA games or hockey games that had it in it. But 94, for some reason, didn't. As we're closing on halfway home in this third period... And we got to get a goal here. Ah! And again, because these guys are so hard to steer, trying to make sure they can stop in time so you don't get an offside is tough. All right, let's see what we can do here. Four and a half to go. Oh, we got a penalty coming up. A 
That may help us out here. So it'll be two minutes for slashing on Terry Yake. Slashing is when you take your stick and essentially use it to whack somebody over the arm. You can go upside. The, you use the blade of the skate that way. That is not good. Let's it go. Still nothing. And nope, Burke's going to send it back out. Shot goes wide. Minute thereabouts on the power play. Oh, do we have an offsetting penalty? We do. Offsetting penalty roughing on Ray Bork. So it's four on four for about a minute. And then Hartford's going to have a power play because our penalty will overlap theirs. And it'll be another power play. So it'll be four on three now. Hooking on David Shaw. So for 14 seconds... It'll be four on three, and then it'll be five on three. That is not what we needed. Because now we got to get back down the ice, because it's five guys on three, including the goalie. And we send that one high up and out of play. So we got to hold off... For another minute to get it to five on four and we've only got a minute 15 to go in the period so now it's five on four and we're trying to see what we can do And Bork with a shot now will be four on four for the last 30 seconds. It's hooking on Andrew Castles. So this has been a uh, penalty-filled contest. But we got a golden opportunity here. But we're going to have a 90-second power play when we go to overtime. So we get to have an overtime period, and it'll be for a minute 33. Now in this, it's whoever scores first wins. So it behooves us to take advantage of this and get somebody down ice and get that biscuit in the basket. And we can call this one good. Oh, that hurt. He got drilled with the puck. Are you kidding me? Short-handed goal, and the Hartford Whalers have won it. Kiprios on the breakaway one-on-one, -on -one and it's squirted by Moog, and that is the game. Ouch. And here I was thinking we'd have a chance to win it. So, yeah, that is NHL 94 in a nutshell. I was hoping for a win. Didn't turn out that way, but that's also how hockey works. Just when you think you've got an opportunity, something's going to happen, and it doesn't go in your favor. So, that is our another Sports Saturday in the books. Hope you've enjoyed it. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and ring the bell for the latest content. Be sure to check out our Sucker Punch Sunday feature tomorrow, where we will have a fighting game from the 3rd, 4th, 5th, or 6th generation. Not quite sure which one yet. I haven't picked it out. But also be sure to follow our Final Fantasy VI walkthrough Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And if there's a recommendation for a game that you would like to see featured here on the Retrocade, be sure to leave it down in the comments below. You can choose from the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Super NES, the Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, Neo Geo, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, or PlayStation 2. Have a great rest of your Saturday, everybody. My name is Ronan. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.